our objective is we have some kind of beam and it's held up with a cable it has a load P and it has a distributed load Q this cable we can call it, um, we're only going to be considering the vertical component we call that tension in the y direction and what we're trying to do is find out where this tension needs to be in terms of x and what the magnitude of that tension needs to be such that our moment at we can call this a our moment and shear at a equals zero so our reaction supports are zero that this is supporting itself is what we're really trying to do x and ty when ma equals zero and va equals zero okay so first thing i gotta do i have to just find out what ma would be in terms of these three things and ve va would be in terms of these three things all the loadings then we set them equal to zero and then solve for our tension and our x that'll give us two equations and two unknowns so let's solve it Okay. Some of the moments at A, we have our load P at the very end. That's a negative moment, P times L. We also have our distributed load that's also a negative moment. That's Q times L to get the force, and we have to multiply it times its moment arm, which is L halves. TY eventually is going to have to compensate for these two forces. It's obviously positive. And its moment arm is just x. The sum of the moments equaling zero. I didn't include ma in there because we're saying it's zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction, I'm going to leave out our va, our shear at a, our reaction support. I'm going to leave that out because we're saying that that's zero as well. All right, some of the forces in the y direction, we get ty minus ql minus p equals zero. Okay, so ty, I don't have any x in my forces equation right here, so I can solve straight for ty, makes it easy. ty equals p plus ql. If I call this equation 1, I'll say sub into equation 1. Negative PL minus QL squared over 2 plus, now I'm going to plug in my P plus QL for TY and I multiply it times X equals 0. Now I've gotten rid of TY in equation 1. I can just solve right for x. I can divide by p plus ql, and this is my answer. I want to go back and check units. You're probably thinking, Chuck, how am I going to check my units? These are all symbols. Well, these symbols have representative units of either length or force of some type. So ty, we would expect ty to be some kind of force. So everything here should equal the units of a force. p has units of a force. Q is force per length, but it's multiplied times length, so that's also force. That's a good way to check your answer, whether it's symbolic or numbers. And let's look at X. X, we're expecting it to be some kind of length or distance. So, on the top, I have a force times a distance, plus a force per length, but that's multiplied times length squared, so it's also force times distance. And on the bottom, I have force, plus force over distance times distance is also force. So overall, the top I have force times distance and the bottom I have force. So my units would end up being length or distance, which is exactly what I expected. So I could have a lot more confidence in my answer knowing that my units worked out. And that's it for that problem.